What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight, Tuesday's NBA slate. Sorry about yesterday. Uh, in general, it doesn't happen much. It's a weird time of year with the holidays, so we both weren't here for live, but uh, that won't be the case today, and, and hopefully not much going forward, but should have you guys covered. Uh, Sheets, I, I wasn't able to play yesterday. I know it wasn't a great day for a lot of people, but uh, any any sort of things to touch on before we jump into the slate? No, I mean, it's a, the NBA is a sport where you need to be around, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, that's the best I can describe it. If you really want to play NBA and, you know, and expect to win, I mean, you got to be around way past lock and for late, you know, starting lineups like Jackson Hayes starting for New Orleans, uh, among other things. And uh, yeah, it's a tough scene, but, you know, listen, we'll, 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 we'll put you, try to put you in the be best position to, uh, to do well. We start with the uh, early look today to give us an idea of what to expect and, We'll go live again at six, and uh, but unfortunately, or fortunately, or unfortunately, that's that might not even be the end of the day for you guys. You know, uh, you used to always have to be on top of whatever news comes out in the NBA being a late swap sport. Yeah, I've done, done a pretty good job. I've, I've tried to do to stay in Discord throughout the night and try to answer questions or pop up my thoughts if we, you know, when we get different starting lineups and stuff. So I'll try to, I mean, I'll try to do that tonight as I always do. Um, try to, but uh. Yeah, again, just sorry. Last night was a little bit of a tough one, but let's get let's get into tonight. I like this slate. It's like again manageable. We don't have Tuesday's well, it's a big slate, but uh, it it doesn't even feel like a Tuesday slate. Uh, and it's 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 you know it, we're used to what two two games, three games on most Tuesdays, and now we've got uh, what what is it nine? You know what's funny? Like you you seem to be at more. You're on top of that more than I am. But is 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 that a um? Is that a standard thing? Like particular days are usually yep. like bigger slates and smaller slates. I didn't. I barely noticed. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesdays and Thursdays are always going to be smaller and they will be more marquee games because okay. they, they play that the TNT uh, has the rights for the Tuesday, Thursday games. So they'll usually be just like four or five games at the most. Um, uh, and, and then Wednesdays are usually crazy. This year they added a lot more Monday games. Usually Wednesday and Friday are the days where you get the, the 12, 13 gamers. But tonight we have a crazy Tuesday one because of the time of year and it's it's uh, everything's a little bit unusual. So. I'm excited about it. I think it's, it should be a fun one, and we uh, we get to start off talking about about my Lakers. So, well, well, I wanted to say about one other thing. So, did you watch the football game last night? No, no, I, I, I've been gone. So here, here, this is an interesting thing that I, I always think about um, when DFS people go on Twitter and just rail on coaches and 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 say, "Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that?" I always have this feeling. Well, this is the truth that. Everybody's opinion is based on their on their opinion of what would be best for their DFS lineups, right? Not not mm -hmm. necessarily what's good for the team or for even the driver for whatever. Just what what does well for their their DFS lineup. So that's why you'll see you know, on Twitter, like God forbid, someone punts on fourth and twelve from their own twenty one or something like that. <laughs> like, they're like, "You've got to be kidding me! How could you punt there?" Or something like that, you know. And, and this just goes on and on. You know, they're like, oh, "How could you how could you dare run the ball on second and one?" when you could be throwing it, you know what I mean? Like you guys just keep, and, and, and it goes on to baseball and basketball, but, but mostly football. And keep in mind that just because you want to do something for DFS doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to, another, it also doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for the, NF, for the, for the team. And I bring it up because yesterday, you know, Jeff Saturday had this great idea that, well, great idea. He had this idea that, that, you know, Matt Ryan wasn't really, you know, able to throw the ball downfield. So he says, okay, Nick Foles, we're going to start you. And, and your job is basically to throw the ball downfield. And DFS people are like, oh, let's go. You know what I mean? That's what I want, man. Just all you got to do is throw the ball downfield. Just, just keep throwing it. Don't worry. Just throw the ball you know, all the air yards you want. That'll make us a fortune. And, and, and you saw the exact reason why you're just not supposed to do that all the time. You know, he, Nick Foles went there literally just did exactly what he was told. And just threw it like deep into like triple coverage. Didn't matter. With the charts were like, thank you for another interception. Thank you for another interception. Thank you for this one. And thank you for the sack or whatever. It's not just so easy to say, okay, let's design a game plan that's that's DFS friendly. You know, you gotta you gotta you gotta devise a game plan based on your skill set and your your personnel. And if, you know, and it's uh, it's, it's I always find it kind of funny like the difference between rooting for something from a DFS reason and rooting for it from an NFL reason. Right. So with that said, okay, and that's why when we talk about NBA, it's like kind of difficult sometimes to forget that you know sometimes it's okay to be a a bad basketball player but good for dfs right and right. it's also to be a you know really great basketball player or a basketball team that's just unplayable for dfs you know you, it's uh 
two different things. Anyway, um, Lakers, Orlando, like you said, boy, if you had told me that this line was going to be 235 total, that was that's very surprising to me. I didn't, I wasn't why aware. Get, why, why, is it, why is it surprising? I just wasn't aware that Orlando plays at these types of paces as well. I just didn't they're, know. They're like the, they've been one of the worst defensive teams in the in the world this year. Oh, okay. Um, but they they're getting they're becoming a better team overall, and they have a lot of firepower on offense. Um, so I, I think I think the total actually is, is feels pretty right to me. And I think this is a is a you know right off the bat a pretty interesting game. Well, I see that um, Dennis Truder is listed as oh he's probable to play on Tuesday. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know if it's a fast game. I mean, I imagine that uh, LeBron's in play. I imagine that Westbrook's in play. I imagine that you know. Maybe Schroeder is in play. But according to the projections, I think this is early. I'm really getting too much of it. I have LeBron. I have LeBron as right now like the fifth best spend up of the day. Mm -hmm. Um, It seems like it should be better, though. But I don't know. That's what I have. And at Orlando, um, I don't really get all that much. Uh, I guess Cole Anthony would be the top guy at, at 5K. It's coming off a really, really good game. Um, but I don't know. It's like I said, maybe it's because it's early or whatever it is. I feel like I, sh- I should have more of this just because of the total and the spread, but I'm just not seeing it right now. Yeah, it's it's you know it's. Um, <laughs> I, I I think this is a great game to stack. Um, Cole Anthony and like you play one of Anthony or Fultz in my opinion. I I, I don't see any reason not to play Fultz, who has the more like secure role, but if Anthony gets going and they, and they started playing them together a little bit, and this is the kind of team they could play them together together with. So you could even play those guys together. I feel like, I feel like both, I feel like you're prioritizing, you know, playing one of those guys. It's just that every, every night, one of them goes like eight X or something. And I think that for me, it's Markel Fultz, but I don't mind if you want to play Cole Anthony because and his projection is better and all that stuff. And it is a good matchup for both these guys. I also am getting to some Paolo um, at low ownership. I think that he's kind of interesting. Uh, it's a, it's such a, it's such a premier matchup that uh, to play the Lakers, you know, honestly, that I, that I think you want to get some, some exposure to these guys. So even though we haven't seen the huge output as much from Bancaro with all these guys back in Wendell Carter, you could say takes away some and sure he does. Um, I'm still, I'm still going to get to some Bancaro tonight though. However, if they do start Carter, I might be a little bit less inclined to get to some of him, but those are my two favorites. I don't mind mixing in a little bit of Wagner because I like the game a lot. Um, but those th- those guys are sort of going to are going to be sort of the priorities for me uh, from this in this spot. And 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 then on the Lakers side, I think Westbrook, uh, Thomas Bryant are my two favorites, uh, followed by LeBron. And I would probably throw in a Beverly or Reeves in a game stack here and there, but neither of them are priorities in any way. Um, I also think you could consider a very large field when and Gabriel plays. I like that better when the Lakers play later, so we can wait for news, and then you can always swap off of that. Um, but now that they're playing in Orlando, it's not we don't have that ability. But this right off the bat is is, is one of the, the key games for me to target, and I do think it's a very stackable game. Um, anyway, that's that's where I'm at here. So I, so, I, for I, those, I, so for those wondering why Thomas Bryant. Um, Played only 19 minutes uh, in the game on Christmas. Uh, I will start by saying your guess is as good as mine. Um, we were, I, my son and I were watching. I, I know the answer. Game. Okay, well, you can tell me in a minute because we were watching that game and he has normal, you know, normal run and then he started in the third quarter. And then they went with basically five guards um, for like an extended period of time into the fourth quarter, apparently. And, and we were, they were even commenting that the, on the, the announcer level, well, it looks like the Lakers are almost playing like with five guards here. And for those of you that are wondering how and why Christian Wood was able to get four million rebounds um, and and destroy the destroy that the slate in that day, uh, the answer is the same. You know what I mean? Because the Lakers literally didn't have a single big on the court. Um, so you could try to explain to me why the Lakers did that. Nonetheless, uh, I don't imagine that there's anything particularly wrong with Thomas Bryant's minutes. Um, that you know you could still project him for your normal whatever Thomas Bryant's minutes into into the twenties at least. Um, but you you tell me why they they decided to not have anybody over six six except for LeBron on the court. Well, they were they were up by eight at halftime, and then they the was like a thirty eight to eight run. So they were desperately trying to come back, and they played their smaller lineup. They still only played ten minutes without a true center. Um, 
well, a true center meaning Gabriel or 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 uh, what's it called? Right, Gabriel played I think eighteen minutes, so eleven minutes I guess. Uh, Gabriel and um, and and Thomas they played, they played the whole fourth quarter with neither Bryant nor Gabriel. So so yeah, so I guess so eleven minutes. So I guess it's twelve minutes. They they, they, they may, may have rounded up because it's nineteen and eighteen between those two guys, and they didn't play together. I don't think. Um, and it's because Dallas doesn't play big. Dallas, that, 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 I mean, uh, Christian Wood is the only big that they have who really plays more of a, you know, like in, other than the rebounding thing is on offense is more of a, a, a perimeter based game. But because the turnaround was so huge in that third quarter, that's why they, you know, they were, they were down by 20 trying to come back the whole fourth quarter. So that's why Brian and them didn't get on the court. Uh, Orlando plays big. I'm not worried about it here. Dallas is a team that we've seen a lot of teams, even who play big in general, not play their bigs against. So I, I I don't think there's anything to read too much into as as far as tonight goes. Um, this is a spot where, assuming that if the game stays close, that they'll do that. They'll they'll keep those guys on the court, and I, I think it was just they were just trying to to make a comeback, and that's what happened. I do think Westbrook's minutes are kind of a little bit con- confusing to me. Um, why they why they sort of have limited him down here, like the other night against Charlotte, he was like the only player who was you know significantly high on the plus minus, and for some reason they didn't play him in a lot of spots in that game. And I have no idea why. So I'm not saying that, that that you should prioritize Westbrook, but I will tell you that I am going to, to prioritize Westbrook tonight. Um, I, I don't think this is going to keep continuing. And I think this is just a, a, a premium matchup. There's literally the, the guards don't do anything for, for defensively for Orlando at all. They're the two of the worst defensive guards in the, in the NBA. Um, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to take the chance and, and play a bunch of Westbrook, uh, but I, I I can certainly understand that people were a little bit hesitant. And Thomas Bryant, even though I like the play, it's not like he's super crazy cheap anymore. I mean, he's fifty nine hundred. No, no, no. There's no reason you have to play him. All right, you ready to move on to Philly, Washington? Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I I I still believe I uh, still believe whenever Washington, I'm telling you, has all their guys in, they're they're not bad. Um. They just Ooh, I, always see, I, I can't agree with that one. <laughs> I know, but I'm telling you, they always see they're missing somebody. Um, and uh, so I will say that if, if we get all these guys playing together, if you have Beal, Kuzma, and uh, uh, Porzingis on the court, I will take Washington plus the points at home against Philly. That's the first thing. Um, second of all, I don't really see too much uh, fantasy-wise in this game. I have Embiid at 10-9, who I think is obviously, you know, I think he's a very strong play. I have him rated below, you know, some others, but not by, but not by too much. Um, and as with most of these expensive spend ups, they're usually kind of low on. So I actually like, um, I like him beat tonight. Um, not really getting to any of those Washington guys. I just talked about really. Um, uh, and everybody else seems to be kind of fairly pl- priced. I mean, what, what do you, what do you think about this game? Yeah, I think that, um, uh... Like playing one of uh, one of Harden or Embiid is a really good idea. Um, I was actually like just looking at the, the spread being only five. It's funny we had a little bit of a different take. I, I actually thought that that almost made me feel like someone was going to sit for Philly. Um, I think I think that, that, that you know, but I guess it is it is a road game. Whatever. Um, Philly is playing great basketball right now. They have won what eight in a row or something. Um, and I, I think the, I think they, 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 that Harden and Embiid are both terrific plays. I'm confused as to why they won't raise Harden Harden's price. I like that he's shooting guard eligible because I like some point guards today. So uh, one of Embiid or Harden um, go back on the the you know again when I say priorities I might have more than I might have more than you could fit in a, in a lineup, but I'm playing multiple lineups. So uh, Embiid and Harden both do stand out as both being really really strong plays here. I think this could be a game where Embiid puts up like one of those eighty. 80 type of games, but if he doesn't, I expect Harden to be. And then I don't, I don't think, I think, I don't think Melton's a terrible play. I just don't think I'm going to get to him. And I can't really find much on the Washington side with everybody healthy that, that, that makes sense to me either. The one thing I'll say though, is that like Embiid doesn't like to come out. I wish we had Porzingis a little cheaper here because Embiid does not like to, to, to come out on defense and guard the three point shooters from, you know, 28 feet from the basket. And for what it's worth earlier this season, um, it wasn't the three point shooting wasn't the reason why, but Porzingis still put up 53 against these guys, uh, earlier this year. And I guess if you had to force somebody and force me to pick someone, it would be him. But as it stands right now, I don't have anybody as a priority. I get, or, and, I, and I think Beal is fairly priced. 
But I just, uh, I don't think when they're all healthy that anybody's going to be a priority. It wouldn't, you know, if I ended up on Beal, it wouldn't make me feel terrible. But I just, I don't think there's any reason to prioritize Washington. I do really like the stand-ups for Billy, though. Speaking of, uh, of what could happen if they don't, uh, if centers that don't like to come out yet, I don't know if you noticed, but Nurkic had, I think, a career high in threes last night. Uh, I think he was five for five to start off from threes. Uh, uh, and he ended up, I think, five, seven or something like that. He had a bunch of threes, maybe more than that. Yeah. Uh, with what's his name not feeling like coming out. Um, okay. Uh, you want to move on? Yeah, let's move on. Um, next one up. Uh, what do you, why don't you start off with uh, Houston, Boston? Yeah. So, I mean, this is obviously a significant amount of blowout risk in this game. Um, 14, 15 point spread, I imagine. And uh, so, yeah, you could play Tatum, but, you know, just not allowed to complain. If, oh my God, I got 48 with one quarter to go. I'm going to smash. And you, you end up with 48. Um, very possible. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Houston side, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I think I'm, uh, then I don't want to play the Tari Eason's and KJ Martin's. Um, I just don't think I want to do it. Um, Sangoon maybe would be my favorite, but you know, for all those other reasons, I mean, I just, I don't know. I just, I just feel like I want to just kind of stay away from this game. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. I definitely think that there is some blowout risk here. I do think that the pricing for the – I mean, one thing about Houston is that they've actually played much, much better basketball for the most part. And they'll have just some really terrible games in there. But they just beat Chicago. And Chicago is – you know, Chicago's really having a down year. But um, but it's tough to beat this Boston team. I think that, you know, it's a, it's kind of a shame like because all of the pricing on these Houston guys are, are really, really tempting. And I actually think the best play is Tarvis, and 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 if I, I'm still not sure I'm going to do it, but KJ Martin is questionable for what it's worth. If he's out, there's no way I'm not playing Tarvis, and um, you know he's gonna he'll look like a he'll look like a projection monster if if uh, if Martin is out. I think, um, but the price, I mean, like Jabari Smith at five K, all of these guys are really fairly priced on Houston, so super contrarian maybe you could even consider like a little bit of a stack and play like i don't know any of the either tatum or brown i think tatum would be the one i would prefer with Derek white or something on the other side and maybe sack this game but for the most part nobody's going to be a priority i i do think Derek white is as a value play isn't isn't bad um that 4200 but nothing that i i want to get carried away with in this one personally um unless it's either like a, it, this does feel like a stack and fade game and it's a stack and Stack and pray would be would be the way I would describe it. So, um, with that said, we can move on to uh, to the, the Clippers and Toronto. You want to start this one off? Yeah, I mean, we got a uh, got Kawhi going back to Toronto. That's always uh, something to talk about, or not mm -hmm. talk about, or ignore, or, or take to heart. And I think you now also, if I'm not mistaken, might have Norman Powell. Um, he's on the Clippers, right? Or no? Yeah. He's going back to Toronto. That could be something. I mean, these are the things I have to come up with with this, with the smallest total on the slate, I guess. Um, what else? Uh, I don't really see, honestly, too much. I, you know who looks really cheap, actually, is Zubac at 4,600. Um, there are other – well, I shouldn't even say cheaper centers. They have other more expensive centers. Um, but I think Zubac at 4,600 is something I could do. Um, Toronto – Siakam at 10-1 with all the guys back, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that, but he's probably my favorite of the Torontos. Well, just another game, which is kind of like, it was, I feel like I'm forcing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. Um, for what it's worth, Siakam is getting there like crazy. Um, well, the last three games he's gotten there, like he's gotten there a pretty big way. Um I, I'm having trouble getting to much here. The one thing I'd say is that Paul George is too cheap at 8,600. Um, he would be the what he would be my 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 desired Clipper, and I don't mind Kawhi, but I I would prefer I would prefer Paul George. Um, the minutes just aren't there for Norman Powell when these guys play. To be honest, they haven't really been there when they haven't played. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to it's hard to go. The Clippers are pretty deep. Um, I think Zubac. This is a very very likely game where he doesn't play many minutes. Um, but I think that if he does, he's way too cheap. So it's one of those things you sort of have to weigh. I I, I do think that the, the 4,600, if he plays, you know, but, but we know, we know that the Clippers like to go small a lot of the time, particularly when Kawhi and Paul George are, are healthy. Um, and they can play more the five and, and play small. 
So I don't think there's – Zubac, I think, will, could, could play 40 minutes like he did the other day, or he could play 17 minutes like he had been for a while. So – I, I think it's a higher it's a it's a higher risk play than than maybe the 28 minutes that he's being projected for. I think that it's very possible he plays 28 minutes, but it's also very possible that he plays under 20 and they go small because um, Siakam is not a true big anyway, um, and not a true not a true five. And yeah, I mean it's everybody. Uh, it's not it's, it's you know two two good pretty good defensive teams and probably not a game that I'm going to be targeting much uh, for DFS. All right, so I got a couple of things in this next game, um, uh, Atlanta-Indianapolis or and, and Atlanta-Indiana. First of all, the obvious, um, at least somewhat obvious, uh, so Tyrese Halliburton in 9K and Trey Young. I think you could play both of those. Uh, I think that's a pretty good back-and-forth matchup that you can that you can do. Miles Turner's uh, uh, relevant at 6,300. That uh, NBR, the NBHABES guy, looks pretty okay at 4,400. But I want to bring up something. I mean, I thought I had a pretty good take in this last game. I mean, you know, had, um, I, I suspected that Jonathan Collins, that John Collins, they were going to start giving his minutes back. And he did play 29 minutes um, out of 17, 20, and then 21. And then uh, I actually said this before he said this. The, the coach even mentioned it before the game. He says he's not going to have his minutes monitored. So obviously, obviously, then in those other games coming back from the injury, um, the minutes were being monitored. You know, so I think that you can now count on him for normal minutes, you know, 30 plus. And with if Capella and I have Capella still remaining out, um, I think Collins is perfectly reasonable at 5,400. So I like, uh, again, to re re uh, review, I like uh, Halliburton and, and Turner and maybe even the NBA's guy, even hard. And then Atlanta, Trey Young and, uh, and John Collins. Uh, yeah, that was a weird game too. There was a he, he played a lot of blowout run. They won by thirty or twenty five or something. Um, so I, I'm not even sure exactly what they're planning on doing with their rotations because they're trying to figure it out. Because they've been Atlanta's just you know they, they just haven't they're, they're, they need to they need to reconsider what they're what they're going for here. I, I think I think this is a very interesting game to target though. I, I do like Collins. I don't feel like the minutes are are secure. But I, I do think that there's, you know, I'll, I don't care at 5,400. I'll take chances on it. On him. He's talented. He's whatever. Um, I also think that you, you know, just just as good a play is probably a Kongu. Um, and he sort of, because he had some games where he really didn't get there, uh, I think that people are sort of off of that. But this is a really good matchup against the Indy front court. And a Kongu, don't worry about the 21 minutes he played in the last game. Remember, it was a blowout. He wasn't playing the blowout run. Um, and he still put up 30 and he put up 44 the game before that against Chicago, a really, really good matchup. So I, I think that both Atlanta bigs, um, Colin, who, are talking, who, are you, who are you talking about this right uh, now? A Congo. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the game. Um, and I kind of see it the other way. I, I, I'm looking at Collins getting the normal starters type minutes. And then like they let him play the first couple of minutes of the fourth. And then when the game was over, they, they took him out. And a Congo is the one they, they left in for the blowout run. Um, Okongwu only played 20 minutes, though, and he played 40 minutes the game before. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, there, there, there's definitely some, you know, like variance with, 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 with these guys, but like likely one of them at least gets the minutes. I, I do think both of them are either way. I think both of them are pretty good plays. Um, I just think that a Congo at much lower ownership with like they're within like what the two two points of each other projection wise. And the Congo is going to be probably a quarter of his own. Um, so I think that's a little bit interesting to me. And I think the price on DeJounte Murray is too low. Um, and I think that, you know, again, he gets, he gets, he's going to have, it's hard with Trey to, to always want to make that play, but both Trey and, I mean, this is a really good game, game stack also. So Trey and DeJounte are both in play for me. I prefer DeJounte for savings, but I don't mind the idea of playing Trey and Halliburton here. And I love Halliburton. I absolutely am going to be all over the Halliburton thing. We know that he's going to have some dud games here and there. He had a bad one last time out against New Orleans. He rarely has two in a row. Um, you can go back through his game log pretty much every time he puts up a, a bad game. He comes back with a monster, except for once um, all season long. And he's 9K, which is for him probably too cheap. Um, I can't get to the other guys. I don't I don't see Nemhard as being a thing at all um, when, when Halliburton plays. I don't think he's had a game that we really would like. Okay. The whole time that's, that's happened, but I do like Turner a little bit, even though it's been a while since he's had a game uh, as well. So 
the main thing would be Halliburton for me, and then maybe on the other side, one of Collins and a Kongu with either DeJounte or Trey. Um, that's that's my priority here. And, and if we're going to consider uh, Nemhard in general, I, I don't understand why we don't think higher of Aaron Neesmith, who actually, when when they've been had these guys healthy, when when Halliburton's played, Neesmith has actually been had the bigger games than than, than Nemhard has. Well, maybe the bigger games, but I, but Nemhard has played thirty four minutes both games with with um, with Halliburton there. Um, right, but his usage rate is like twelve percent. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I hear you. I mean, he, he he'll play minutes for sure. Like I, I agree. Well, he, I, you know, he played he only played twenty minutes the other day. Um, but yeah, I, I, you're, you're you know, he, he, uh, Eric Neesmith has 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 maybe a little bit more variance on his minutes because of. But one of these guys will lose some minutes to Matherin no matter what. Um, that's yeah. And either way, uh, the main the main plays for me are. are Halliburton and uh and and I'm I'm open to Turner because the I like the matchup, but it's been a while since we've seen anything of the game from Turner, so it kind of feels bad. But uh I do like the the the, the main the, the main priority for me will be Halliburton um with one of the the Atlanta guards and one of the Congo and Collins. What's the is that the end of what's his name of Jalen Smith? I mean, I used to love playing this guy. What happened? They just I guess with Turner back, he didn't play as much. Is that the story? He had a big game a couple games back. Um, well, no, it's it's not not with Turner back because he was starting alongside Turner. They just started playing Neesmith Smith at the four. Um, okay. They changed their rotations. They they were playing double big for a while. They stopped doing that, and they could do it again tonight. By the way, it's actually you know actually that that wouldn't be the worst large field play in my in my mind. Uh, the Jalen Smith idea, but I don't think I'm I don't think I can get there. But it, it could be the kind of night where you see them play two bigs because Atlanta plays two sort of bigs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's all I got. Keep in mind also, Chris Duarte is back as well. So, Ooh, um, okay. and he's been back for, you know, a few games now, but the minutes have started creeping up, which is going to take away from Nemhart and from uh, Neesmith and from Matherin. So the only one who's not going to really affect any by any of this is, is Halliburton unless somehow the bench unit gets going crazy, but they, they're pretty deep now in, in Indiana. So mostly it's going to be Halliburton for me. All right. We're going to talk about so Sohan, huh? Yep. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you jump in with, with, with what you think here? Well, what's interesting is that we were suspecting that he might sit uh, in this last game because of like he played, he played back to back 22nd and 23rd. We didn't think he'd do it again, but you know what he played? Um, I, I could care less that he only scored 17 sure. fantasy points. Fact is, he played 31 minutes, and if you're going to give me 31 minutes against Oklahoma City at 4,100, I might be joining the other 72% of the people that play him. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, implicit in that comment, obviously, is, is the idea that he's going to probably look like a really, really good play, and it's going to be really, really popular. Um, and, you know, back-to-back -back games with Pops are, 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 are not usually what you want to do. Um, as far as playing popular players, but forty one hundred seems kind of, kind of, kind of bad as far as the price goes. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, he's breaks his overall the number one point per dollar play on the slate and is being owned uh, accordingly. Uh, from Oklahoma City, uh, remember this is a you know two million point uh, spread. Uh, Shea is obviously a, a very very strong spend up, and then you have. Uh, the OK City uh, uh, carousel, but I think I, I I'll stick with the uh, with with Dort and then the obviously always very volatile uh, Pukashevsky as my favorite OKC guy. So uh, Shea, Shea Puka Dort and then on San Antonio, just I just have the so chain so him. Yeah, I feel like that price on Dort is going to make people more interested than I think they should be. Um, he really is just not, I mean, he's like putting up like 15 fantasy points every game, it feels like. Um, but I, I, I like the Poku. Um, I, I'm into it. It was his birthday, uh, yesterday. Hey. I only know that because it was Chet, Chet Holmgren. Uh, Chet Holmgren is a guy I follow and, 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 and I, I, he's volatile. Um, I'm willing to gamble with a little bit. I like the idea of maybe getting some, some Poku and, and Sohan as, as value plays and, I have no idea why, like, like I, I still am on this, you know, Giddy is going to look like a, a, a good, a better point per dollar play, but I'm just always, you know, interested in, in, in the low owned, uh, especially at home, the low owned Shea. Uh, 
you know, he just put it coming off a game with 73. Uh, he was he was incredible in that one. I know that was an overtime game, but he had 60, 67 or something in regulation. Yeah, exactly. And he sort of gotten back to his like his old. He had a, a brief period where he went down into the low 30s for usage. Now he's I mean, like he's he's mid 30s and up. Like I, I really like the idea of getting to some to some Shay um Shay or Giddy that's just sort of the way it goes I think that one of these guys basically the way they play that I, they basically always get there and I am other than so and I am off of the Spurs uh I just Podal is totally fine for tournaments because he's going to be low on but they're really not I mean they're they're really limiting his minutes which is kind of weird like because he's supposed to be traded at some point some but some contender team is is going to use him at least as a, he's a good rotation guy but I don't know why they're not, you know, maybe they just want to play the young guys and, and maybe that's the right thing to do. But they're not playing total the minutes that we want to, that we're going to be able to get enough out of them. But uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of good, again, as I was saying earlier, like a lot of good guards on this this slate. So the SGA giddy thing is is the, going to be overlooked. And I think that both of those guys are strong plays. They just don't like them quite as much as I like Halliburton or... And they're very close with the Trey Trey Young situation. Uh, Shea and Trey are very are very close for me tonight. Um, so, did you think about Jalen Williams at all? Because I I don't think I'm going to do it, but I was just looking at him as a potential other value. Maybe I think I you know I think I'd rather go poker. Never mind, Chiefs. I, I'll skip that one. I answered my own question. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing that right now. Um, but uh, you know, poker. Remember, poker is very volatile, and you know, just because his last game. It worked out. Doesn't mean this 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 game will too, but it's very cheap. You know, you could even get kind of a mediocre game and, and not be too upset with what he does. Um, yeah, agreed. So he's really like he's a, he's a gamble on Fanduel at fifty seven hundred, right? But, but he's not a gamble as much because like you like the one thing we we can feel you know at least that he's going to play like he had the one weird game against Miami where he only played eight minutes. Other than that, he's at least played twenty minutes in almost all of his games lately. And if he plays 20, he's at least giving himself – he'll give himself a chance to play himself into having a game. So that's all I can ask for. i got to tell you, between Sohan and, like, Poku, I mean, those are those are two very legit values, I think, on this slate. Yeah, and, and and the cool thing is even, like, Poku, yeah, sure, maybe he doesn't get there all the time, but there's a chance those two guys can get you, like, 75 or 80 combined. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm into that idea. All right, Memphis and Phoenix. Um, so what's interesting about this, uh, among other things, is that not only is Booker out, but now Shamit's out as well. Um, yeah, Shamit, who's become like the, the superstar. <laughs> superstar Shamit, who, Shamit, Shamit, who Shamit, who has become the superstar indeed. Um, so I guess we're going to de- have another uh, Damian Lee night uh, as far as at least the way he's going to project. He doesn't look that way right now, but. I, I just think he's going to start, and I think he's going to be popular. I mean, with, with neither Booker nor Shamit, I don't know exactly what else people are going to play. I mean, I guess a Kogi. Um, what about people going to play this, 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 this Dwayne Washington? And if not, should we? I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe he'll maybe he gets the run. He had twenty he played what 15, 20 minutes in his last game, twelve the game before that. You know, he could he could do stuff. Maybe that's the idea um, instead of being a playing a maybe a chalky Damian Lee. I don't know, but I think he's probably play somebody. Uh, uh, what's his name? DeAndre Ayton at 7,500, cheap enough. Uh, Chris Paul, even though his uh, his produ- production came in overtime, um, still, I mean, he had a good game of, anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And so he's, you know, again, he's reasonable. Um, this game is another one that could get, Pretty out of control, though. <laughs> you know, I think Memphis can, like you were saying the other day, this a lot. Like Memphis wins, and they sometimes win by a lot. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. when they, like when they get it going, they 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 can they can hammer people, and this yeah. could be a game like that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not really seeing much on the Memphis side. Uh, I'm not. Where's Morant for me? I mean, not really that great of a play for me. Um, that plus the blowout risk probably leaves me off of Memphis for the most part. So for me, I, I might take a shot with the, with, with one of those Phoenix values I talked about um, and maybe Aiden. I don't know. Uh, what, what do you think? You like, you like Dwayne Washington? You like uh, Amy yeah. Lee? What, what do you got here? I, I mean, Dwayne Washington was a DNP CD last game. Um, even with Booker out when Booker got hurt in the first quarter. Oh, was he? Okay. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see how I can get to him. You, you're playing the blowout angle if you're playing him. The only time he's getting run, I think, is, is I guess so. in blowout run. 
Um, I, I just have it as 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 I think you can pick between Lee, Akogi, and Craig. Okay. Uh, Tony Craig as as guys you could consider. Uh, everything else in this game is pretty much doesn't exist except for I think Steven Adams is a reasonable play. Anytime you have a true five against him, I think you're gonna see, you you have the upside of playing more minutes. And they just had this matchup and Memphis beat the hell out of them. And I think that it's hard to blow teams out back to back games, especially good teams. But I think this is a good opportunity to do so. Um, but I, I don't think Adams is any sort of a priority. It's just a just a guy. You know what I mean? That the priority would be to, to to maybe take a shot with for value on one of Lee Akogi or Tory Craig, and even those aren't like super values. So I'm not all that interested in in this game for, for DFS purposes. Um, if it does stay close, Chris Paul, you know, maybe you could talk yourself into that play. I think. I mean, it's not like he's he's really not like in real life. He's he's just not nearly the player that he was. He has not been good. He wasn't, in my opinion, he wasn't very good against uh, Denver the other night. It's, you know, it just was, I mean, he was good. He, was, he had 16 to 6. He was in overtime and all that stuff. But he, um, I don't know. It, it feels like a blowout -y game, but if it stays close, I guess he's just going to have the ball in his hands enough to where he makes sense. But I don't know. I don't, I don't love playing, uh, playing, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I just don't really love anything here, to be honest. I'm trying to talk myself into it, but no reason to with all the other guys I like. I mean, Chris Paul has definitely got a ceiling, though. It's the only thing I'd say is that if you're playing like 150, you're definitely getting to like, I don't know, five or ten percent at least of Chris Paul. Um, I just don't think he's going to make a priority list for me because I'm not playing 150. Okay, so going on to this next game, I have a couple of comments. First of all, Jalen Brunson is questionable. I will say this: if Jalen Brunson does not play in this game, he will have he must have a broken freaking hip. Okay. Yeah. There is no way he's not on this freaking court for this game going back to Dallas, having played second fiddle. Well, I mean, not that he could have complained about it, you know what I mean? But 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 playing, you know, in, in kind of a reserve like role sort of in Dallas for years. And now he's kind of the man sort of uh sort of uh in New York. I mean, he's he's gonna he, he's he's he'll he'll play. Okay, let's put it this way. And if he doesn't play, the guy's probably really, really hurt. The mm -hmm. other thing I'd like to say is that I almost never play these things. Listen, I, I know Dallas plays slow and all this stuff. There ain't no way this game goes under this number. I mean, this is the 217. I mean, just never happening. Yeah, um, the Knicks, you think it's just guaranteed, huh? Yeah, I, I've seen. I've listened, I've watched this team play a little bit too much recently. All R.J. Barrett does when he touches the ball and shoots. All Julius Randle does when he touches the ball and shoots. Now you have Jalen Brunson who's probably going to take a more shot. This game is going to go. This game is going to go bonkers. Okay, I, I'm not. And if it doesn't go bonkers, it's, it's not. It's not going to go under two seventeen. And I actually might bet this. My first like total bet of the of the year. Okay, I'm just not interested in that. So uh, with that said, I mean, I guess I should up the projections on all these Knicks that who are not showing up at all. I like. Uh, Randall 9,300 seems pretty, pretty brutal though to get to. He's um, been awesome though. I mean, he's, he's 50 paid it off every freaking game though, right? Including like tough matchup against Toronto. He still got there. So I think you, I think you play the three, you know, the three lefties, you know, Bar Barrett, Brunson, Randall. Um, I don't listen, I guess for the same reasons that I can't get mad if Rand that, that Thomas Bryant didn't play, play too much. Uh, maybe it's not the right idea to go back to Mitch Rob in a, a uh, in a matchup like this. Uh, maybe he doesn't get the same. Maybe they don't need him as much uh, here, and they could even play Randall with the five if they need to in this this mm -hmm. type of game. Mm -hmm. um, on Dallas, I don't, I don't know if I can play a, a Donkic at twelve k. A couple of comments. First of all, about Tim Hardaway. Um, my comment on Tim Hardaway is this: Yeah, he's been doing better, or whatever. But I mean, I saw I've been watching. Listen, I saw that game against the Lakers. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen the team play worse defense in my life. It Lakers. was awful. It was it, they ran the same freaking play. They threw it to the high post, and Tim Hardaway was between Tim Hardaway and Reggie Bullock. They were just standing there, ready to take a wide open shot. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, they scored fifty points in like in the third quarter. Yeah, it was like a shooting drill. I'm telling you, they were just yeah, standing there ready, like, doop, 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 just like that. I mean, oh my yeah. God, he's hot. okay. Listen, give me anybody. Sitting there taking the wide open corner three without contesting, uh, they'll look good. In any case, um, Hardaway, I guess he'll be all right. The guy I'm interested in, by the way, is the guy that you wanted not you wanted me to play that you brought up on Christmas. Um, you know, it's probably a short slate guy, but what about um, oh, wait a minute, he's not even on this team. Oh, yeah, he is. What about the Bertans taking a shot with him? 
Um, I was only watching him because you said, well, maybe he's worth a shot. He only played 11 minutes or whatever. Game before that, he played 17. I don't know. He's 3,400. Uh, he could get hot here. I don't know. Uh, I just figured I would ask you about him and see if you yeah. could recommend him or if he was just kind of a short slate, short slate guy. Yeah, I think he's just a short slate guy. And okay. he was cost and there was very little value on Christmas. Oh, okay. Okay. So that was my, my, my justification. I can't get to it tonight. Um, I, I can't really get to much on, like, I, I think you could make an, obviously a case for Luca and Wood and, and Hardaway. Like the problem is with all of them playing together, you, you, theoretically it caps Luca's ceiling, but he also just put up 82 with these guys against Houston the other day. And he still put up 60 in that game against the Lakers the other day, even though Wood was going nuts. Um, everybody kind of went nuts for them. So it wasn't like it was just, you know, um, Hardaway had a big game as well. I'm not as interested in the Dallas side, but I just think that every day with these minutes with the Knicks, we have to prior, we have to pick the guys out. My favorites here is Brunson going back to Dallas. Like, and 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 then and then Julius Randle, who oh, by the way, almost he was in the running for, for Dallas to sign him a couple of years ago. Um, and that was like a big thing. So uh, Brunson and, and Randall make the most sense. I like Barrett better at home in general. I feel like the Knicks crowd gets him going and I have to double check the numbers this year. I know last year he was drastically better at home. Um, I'm not sure exactly this year. I've got to double, like I said, I have to double check, but I think that he's been better at home as well. So I, I probably would, would prefer one of the Brunson or, or Randall, and they're not going to get much ownership. And, you know, we, we, we say that they could play Richard at the fly, at Randall at the five, and they totally could. They just never choose to. They they are playing Mitch Rob, and then the other minutes go to uh, Hartenstein and Sims. It just they never they never seem to let Randall play those five minutes because he loves to he loves to shoot a million threes now. Yeah, I know, but they, you think that as but as a five, that's that's right. you know, he's gonna I don't know he's gonna do he's gonna shoot, shoot anyway. <laughs> like, um, but I, I just love these guys. You can't, you can't you can't ask for guys with more secure minutes in all of basketball without if the game stays close. Uh, I also think the Knicks are like five point underdogs. I, I'll take the Knicks in that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I, but I do think you're prioritizing. Uh, for me, it's Brunson and Randall. Um, I think you play one of them. I think you can play two, but I would prefer to play one. And uh, it starts with Brunson then Randall for me. And I think Mitch Rob is completely in play against a team that still has trouble rebounding. Uh, it's, it's a slow paced game, so you know Mitch Rob is all over the place. So he's, it's really just a tournament play, tournament dart. But there is, uh, he certainly has like 40 plus upside. So I, I don't mind mixing him in. He's just not a priority. But I do think that Brunson at low ownership, if he plays and and Randall at low ownership are are really, really interesting. And I, I love those kind of plays that that aren't going to be owned and you just feel so safe that you're going to at least get the chance. That's, you know, that's the thing in DFS. Like I don't feel bad when my guys don't perform. I feel really bad when they don't get, don't play, you know? Um, these guys are always going to play those those 40 minutes when the games are close, and this should be a close one. So you get an hour and a half break, and then you get two totals that combine to 480 for, in the last two games. Um, and that's that's fun. You know, you get, you get Charlotte Golden State, you get Denver Sacramento. Uh, this is this is this is NBA DFS at its at its greatest. You know, mm -hmm. I love this stuff. I love playing these late games. Uh, God forbid I actually have a decent decent lineup going into these last two games it's a uh, very enjoyable i'll do the bobby five just reverse sort by pmr and then let's just freaking just watch our, watch ourselves just climb up that leaderboard um so i guess we'll start with the the charlotte one um you got jordan Poole shoots the ball 400 times a game until he gets ejected every game uh and against charlotte who plays like lightning uh i imagine he's going to be popular but Sounds good to me. Um, what else from Golden State? Uh, I guess I'll have to ask you if this is a Draymond type of game, but he certainly looks like a good play to me uh, as far as the projections go. So I would start with those two. Um, and then on Charlotte, uh, I don't I don't know if, if I can do it, uh, LaMelo, at that price. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Uh, maybe. it's the right kind of matchup, right? <laughs> yeah, and maybe, uh, and then maybe uh, I'll get the I'll get the Kelly Oubre game right. Uh, that that's always a fun fun thing to, to hunt. Um, Rogier Hayward, I, I don't know. I kind of want to play these guys, but they're not not popping off. Uh, how how did what's his name do? Uh, PJ Washington last night. Uh, Good. Did well. Yeah, there you go. So we had thirty eight. 
go back to him maybe. Yeah, he's, he's, he's he goes through these little heaters where where he gets out. Of, I mean, he's shooting the ball really well, so that helps. I mean, he's a good he's a he's a really good shooter, but like he's made what he shot four out of five last time, but three out of six from three. Uh, so he's seven out of his last eleven from three. That always boosts him a little bit, but and it's, it seems like when he's making threes, he, he gets fired up the other way. Every time he hits threes, he ends up with all the steals and blocks for some reason. This is a I love this as a game stack, man. Um, and uh, this is the my second favorite full on stack of the night. Uh, I'm sorry, my, my my second favorite one that we've gone over because I think we're going to talk about the other one in a minute. Um, but I'm I'm in I'm, I'm in on 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 taking shots. The problem is I'm just running. I'm getting to too many players right now. Um, I like Lamelo in this in this matchup, but it is it is a high price, but probably one that he can he can he can pay off. Um, on top of everything else, one a little extra bizarre narrative is you know they passed on him in the draft uh golden state and you know that that's something that uh that that at least is worth you know throwing out there and i think that you know all of these guys look like they're priced pretty fairly but the game environment is so good gordon hayward uh pj washington terry rozier all of these guys can get there so if you don't want to play Lamelo, i don't tell you great uh i think hayward would actually be my my next favorite for safety and I think that PJ Washington and Ubre, but I, I do like the Ubre upside, and it feels like a good game environment for Ubre also against his former team, which we say that about Ubre all the time because he's played for everybody. But I do think this is a, that, that's something, and I, I love Pool. Uh, I think Pool Green and Clay are in play, but in that order, Pool then Green and Clay. I think Ty Jerome is a reasonable value if you don't want to play those guys um, otherwise. Well, even if, even if you play those guys, I think Ty, Ty Jerome is is probably a reasonable value and it's certainly a placeholder for for the late night game so at, at the very least so I, i'm in on that too wise wiseman got uh eight minutes on christmas yep uh, because the game was close if the game's close he's not going to play much <laughs> i think they got 17 on christmas what did mooney get on christmas mooney but mooney played because the pool got ejected right mooney got 23 minutes yeah, and he actually, um, in real life, like the eye test looked good with him just on the court. Um, but he, you know, nothing, nothing I'm too excited about. Um, and the Draymond got 35. Okay. It, it, these guys are all, are, are all reasonable thin values. They're, they're better values on other slate, other games where you think they're going to lose. This is, they're good at home. They're playing Charlotte. They should win this game. It doesn't feel like the kind of game where I want to take the the extreme value from uh, from Golden State. I'm going to wait till they're going to get blown out again on the road to do that. So Denver, Sacramento. Do you like the point guards? Do you like uh, that would be Fox and Murray? Do you like the bigs? That being Jokic and Sabonis, or or do you like Michael Porter Jr. or some com combination of all of that? Um, because I think all those are really really strong plays in a 240 point total. With a with a short spread, um, well, you tell me what do you what do you got here? Yeah, it's a tough slate, man, because there's a lot of good games here. Um, I, I you know this is this would uh, a lot of nights look like the, the the great game stack and hard not to to have some interest in a low owned Jokic, but again, we're running out of players. I don't think it's the best like optimal play, you know, with with the lack of value. But if we get some more value, I think that's that's totally reasonable. Um, I don't think I would go to Sabonis against Jokic tonight. That's not my favorite thing to do. Um, I like Murray. And I think Murray and Fox would probably be my two favorite plays in this game, but certainly is a, is a, is a game you could stack different ways. I think that you could, um, this also feels like a game where Michael Porter could be going uh, as well. And it's interesting to me that Porter, you know, historically has taken away from Jokic. Jokic had a monster game the other day. It didn't really matter that Porter was playing. Um, but all three of those guys are certainly in play for me. I have it as a, a Murray, then Porter, then Jokic, but I think they're all totally in play. And on Sacramento, I have it Fox and then Monk as the guys I've been considering, but probably only going to play Fox. I actually like the gold, the Charlotte Golden State game better than I like this one for a stack. And it makes me very nervous not to mention Jokic's name because I just feel like that 90 fantasy points is always on the table for him. And they, you know, as much as I like Sabonis as a as a player, he he's not going to be able to do much with Jokic down there. And Jokic just put up now what 88 and 95 and two out of his last four games. <laughs> like, and I uh, kind of kind of going to want to have him if if if, he, if he's if that's going to happen. And this this is the kind of game where you feel like that could happen. So I may end up uh, squeezing him into some lineups, but uh, I'm actually going to write that in <laughs> because I just I think that he's going to be overlooked. But for me, the priorities. I like the Lakers and uh, Golden, the Lakers in Orlando. I like the Golden State Charlotte. 
And then my third favorite would be the uh, Atlanta Indy. And in terms of individuals, I think playing one of them, Mead or Harden, is, is, a, is a good idea. I think playing one of Murray or Trey, Collins or Okongwu. I like Halliburton. I like Sohan. I like Poku. Uh, SGA and Giddy sort of fit the same Trey or Murray kind of a, th- or a role for me. But I like the game better. I think you could, get, you know, the Lee, the Damian Lee, uh, Tory Craig, Akogi. I hope I don't have to play those one of those guys, but I think that as of right now, value wise, they all sort of make sense. And um, as always, I will try to prioritize one of the one of the Knicks big three in 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 most of my lineups, and then I'm just deciding what I want to do with the uh, Denver. The sorry, with the OKC, not OKC with the uh, Denver, Denver side of things in that game, because I, I think Murray, Porter, and Jokic, one of those guys probably gets there, but I, I'm having trouble deciding which one I like the best. I think it's probably Murray. I think Poku and so, so, Sohan, the two of those, unlock most of what you want to do. Um, yeah. If you get a third thing, then it locks up, unlocks everything you want to do. <laughs> um, so you could play, you know, any of those games where you wanted to, play two studs or two semi studs against one another, having the two value guys there is probably good enough, but I promise you that if the third ones opens up, um, then you're definitely going to be able to do it. Like you'll be able to play. I mean, not, I don't even know if you want to do it, but you, let's say you want to play Jokic and Sabonis together or something like that. Um, you can, you can make that work. You know, if you wanted to play uh, even uh Two Nick, maybe a Knicks with maybe a random and, and, and Luca together, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you, could, you could do it with the value that probably could do it with the value that exists because there's other kind of ancillary value, like that other, like the rest of those OKCs, like uh, Gort and under 5K is probably, you know, good enough. Um, um, so, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll watch for more news that'll come out and we'll say, say this every time. Doesn't look like there's going to be much. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Doesn't look, doesn't look like there's going to be much. And then, then Incoming, we, can... we have like 19 guys ruled out. And how are yeah. you going to spend our money kind of conversations coming up later? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we'll... No, no, we hang up. We hang up and, uh, and, and Jordan Poole was out. Something like yeah, that. exactly. Something like that. Um, yeah, it, it should be. I mean, I like the slate. It's a big slate. It's a tough slate for a Tuesday. Um, I will. We will be live at six Eastern, and I will be in Discord. I will post all, all my early builds, um, all my uh, bets of the day, and all of my core plays. Uh, and shortly, right once we're done with this, so. And again, I, I hate to make uh, Fanduel the the abandoned child, but you know what? Why don't you, why don't you card better tournaments? You know what I mean? Then then maybe we'll pull. pull well, actually, you know what? They finally put one up today. They have a nice one today. I, if, well, I, with that said, all right, since since they did that, I'll let, let me get thirty seconds. Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk. Let's do, you can jump on the fan. So we'll I will just at least say like what looks different here. Well, Lamelo looks much more playable on Fanduel down to eighty nine hundred for openers. Um, uh, and then you have that's the one thing that actually stands out. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's I agree. There's not a whole lot that stands out as being different. Yeah. Um, I don't see I don't see a, a major a major difference over there. Just want to remind everybody, as always, go for the high steel block guys on FanDuel in general. Um, it's always a good idea. Uh, you can overpay a little bit for them just because that that steel block upside is so important um, on FanDuel. The but I, I agree. I mean, it's 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 gonna it's basically like the same slate on both sites today. Which you know what I, you know what I see on FanDuel. I don't know. This is really strange. I see like a thirty five percent ownership projection on a Kongu. Um, let's see. 5,800. Does that make sense to you? I don't see him as that high. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't either. I mean, it's early, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, yeah. I, I wonder why it's that high. That seems a little bit too high. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I would fade him if, if that's going to be the case, but if, if he, I, I would too. yeah, if, if, if it's not going to be the case, then I would definitely consider it. But yeah, everybody else's price sort of in a similar price range, which we don't see every day. So it's kind of interesting. The sites are sort of in agreement today. All right. Well, it should be a fun one, guys. Good luck to everybody today, and uh, we'll see you at 6 Eastern. Okay.